In this tutorial, we're going to teach you how to install WordPress over SSH. In order to do this, you'll need some familiarity with the terminal or if you're on Windows uh, Putty or another SSH client of your choosing. Uh, you'll also need your SSH credentials to your web server. And if you don't have those, you can get them off your web host. So if I just go to my browser here, this is currently my website. And as you can see, there's, there's nothing in there at the moment. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to SSH into my server. So I do that by inputting SSH uh, space and the username at the IP address. If you don't have the IP address, that's absolutely okay. In fact, it's better if you use the domain. Uh, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to use that. Uh, it, it will prompt you for a password. So put whatever your web server password is in there and hit enter. If you're connecting to your server via SSH for the first time, then you will be given a message saying uh, there is a key that's new and would you like to accept that? Just type in yes and hit enter if that's the case. Now, depending on what your web server is, uh, who you're hosting with, that'll depend. That'll dictate uh, where we need to install WordPress. So uh, this is just a, a very generic Ubuntu server. So what I'm going to do is use CD to change directory and go into var www. And if I just run ls, we can see that there's no files in here at the moment. There's nothing actually. And that's why we can see in the background on the browser, there's nothing represented there. So what we first need to do is download WordPress. And we can do that pretty easily uh, using a command called wget. So we just type in wordpress.org forward slash latest.tar.gz. And that will make the server download WordPress. So that's done. So if we type ls again, we can see that we have only that one file in there right now. And it's a tar.gz format. So what we need to do is we need to extract it. It's very similar to a zip file. So uh, if this is your first time viewing it, think of it like a zip file. So in order to extract that, we type tar xfz, then the file name, and hit enter. Now if we do ls, we can see we have WordPress. It's in a separate folder. Uh, if you want to run WordPress in a separate folder, you can leave it as is, but I'm going to pull this back into the root web directory. So what I need to do is run MV, which is move. So I need, want to run everything in WordPress and I want to move that into the current directory. So I just hit enter. Oops. So I need to run, yeah, so I need to get everything out of WordPress and put it into the current directory. So if I do ls again, I can now see that I have all of my WordPress files there, but We've still got latest.title.gz and the WordPress folder. So what I'm going to do is show you how to get rid of those because you really don't need them once you've become once you've come this far. So we use rmdir, dir, which is remove directory. And we want to remove the WordPress directory. Uh, and to run another command straight after this, we use two ampersands and rm-f, so that's for file. And we go latest.title.gz. And that'll do that. So if we ls again, we can see those are gone. So right now, if we go back into our browser and we just refresh, we can see that WordPress is there. It says there's no wp-config.php file, which is somewhat true. So if we go back into our terminal, we can actually see we have wp-config-sample.php. And in order to set this up, what we need to do is actually have database details ready to go. So what we need to do now is we need to open the MySQL terminal. All you need to do is type mysql dash u for username, which the username I'm using on this server is root, and then dash p. You hit enter, it'll ask you for a password, so you put in the password and hit enter. So what we need to do first is create a database. So we go create database, and I'll just call this wpdb. And whenever you're running in a mysql command, it always needs to end with a semicolon. So that's been successful, excellent. So now we need to grant usage on the databases to uh, username at localhost identified by password. And once again, make sure you close it off with a semicolon. Secondly, we need to grant privileges in, like in addition to usage. So again, we just go grant all privileges 
on dpdb dot star to Aaron at localhost semicolon enter perfect and then finally use WPETB and that says the database has changed so all we need to do now is type exit to leave the MySQL terminal and we'll just hit Alice again just to bring up the list of files that we have and what we're going to use now is the move command which is MV so we're going to type in the origin which is wp-config sample.php and what we want that to be now changed to so just wp-config.php so if we type ls we can see wp-config is just here just in the place the wp-config sample was before so now we need to open this file up and to do that with terminal on an ubuntu or a linux server you can use vi or nano i prefer nano so i'm going to use that today so wp or nano wp-config.php and that opens it up and we just scroll down to where the DB name is and the username is oh sorry the, the database name is WPDB scroll down a little bit more find the username field I'm just going to use the root username and password uh, naturally you should use whatever your WordPress server comes with uh, and just go down to the table prefix because if you want to change this now's the best time to do it which is before you install we call it our db under slash language is by default english and there's really nothing else we need to check in this file so what we need to do is save and quit so to quit we just go control x and that'll actually ask do you want to save the changes you've made so just hit y for yes it'll then prompt you to input the file name you want to write we just leave it exactly what it is and we hit enter. Now if we go back to our web server and refresh, WordPress prompts us for these installation details. So we'll just call it WordPress via SSH, username, first name, or first initial surname, uh, then a password, and the admin email address, and then click install. So that's WordPress installed. Uh, we'll just log in to make sure it all works. Excellent, there we go. So the dashboards are working. Let's just quickly visit the site. And there we go. So in this tutorial, we've shown how quick and easy it is to install WordPress via SSH. It's not quite as fast as doing a one-click installation with your web host, assuming that they do support that because most do. Uh, but it does allow you to get your hands dirty with some terminal uh, and make some changes to the files using uh, Nano as your text editor rather than doing it all by, via the web interface. It's just really good practice to have because uh, Terminal is infinitely useful. And we're going to wrap it up there. So if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below.